In the last class, we introduced the load-life relationship that was a power law relationship between the load and the number of cycles to failure. That power law was a simple one, and we found that if we plotted lifetime on the x-axis and radial load on the y-axis, we got a power law relationship between them so that fr times l to, to the 1 over a is going to be equal to some constant. And then we plot these on a log-log plot and identified a bearing selection parameter, C10, associated with a lifetime parameter, L10, all for 90% reliability. So this is a 90% reliability line where we've linearized the power law by taking logarithms. It's still true that that power law applies along any single line in the radial load lifetime plane. And we know that the slope of that line is related through this power law with an exponent a of 3 for ball bearings and a of 10 thirds for roller bearings. L10 is the rated lifetime for a particular radial load, and they use the 10 because you have 10% failure. That is, at this particular load, C10, 10% of the samples will not last 10 to the 6 cycles to failure. That's all for a reliability of 90%. So if we are on the 90% reliability line, we can simply relate our design load and design lifetime to the, uh, the parameter C10 that's provided in the tables by the manufacturer to the simple power law. That's all good as long as the reliability is 90%. If we are also, if we are measuring lifetime in hours instead of rotations, we have to compare convert our hours lifetime to rotations using the simple conversion that we talked about before. And I have this notion here that we can't always get what we want, and so you have a target C10 value that would achieve your given design load and design lifetime, but you're probably not gonna find that in the tables so that you would choose a slightly larger C10 value. Now, the other thing that we do here is we introduce a normalized lifetime, and that would be your design lifetime divided by the manufacturer's L10 lifetime. That becomes your normalized lifetime. And we use normalized lifetime when it comes to probability shifting as we want to go to higher reliability. So if we want a higher reliability, we have to take account of the fact that if we want a higher reliability, than 90%, then we're gonna be choosing a different line. We're gonna to shift to the left in this load lifetime space to increase the reliability. Now, what we know is for the 90% reliability, which is all the manufacturer's data, we have a C10 and an L10 value. Well, if we're in the normalized space where we're dividing L by L10, then that's associated with an X10 value of one. So we have a normalized lifetime of one for a C10 value. But what we know is that this is the 90% probability line. And that if we did a bunch of tests at a given C10 radial load, we would get a distribution of failure lifetimes. And that distribution is well described by what is called a three parameter Weibull distribution. And we'll get to that in a minute. So if we have a design load and lifetime, where I now plot the design lifetime as a normalized lifetime, and we have a chosen design reliability that's greater than 90%, we have to figure out how to shift from the 90% reliability curve to this higher reliability curve. And so what we do is identify this, we project this C10 value across all the reliability curves. And for the reliability that we're interested in, we pick off the intercept between that C10 value and the associated normalized lifetime for that particular curve. And so we then, once we're on this curve, we can do a simple shift to our proposed design load and design lifetime for our given reliability. And we can associate the C10 value with that higher reliability curve. The only way we're gonna do that is if we know what XB is. We can't know what XB is until we have the Weibull reliability distribution function, which is shown here. And that is the reliability depends upon the exponential, the negative exponential of our particular chosen normalized lifetime minus an X naught divided by theta minus X naught all raised to the power B. What are these things? Well, it turns out that these theta 
x0 and b are part of what's called a three-parameter Weibull distribution, and the manufacturers provide those three parameters for you. You might have to look hard to find them, but you can get them. So SKF is manufacturer two in this table. Timken is manufacturer one. So they're just bearing suppliers. The L10 lifetime for SKF is one times 10 to the sixth. The L10 lifetime for Timken is 90 times 10 to the sixth. And these are the associated Weibull parameters. Now, X naught is a value below which the lifetime will never fall. So there is a guaranteed minimum where you have 100% reliability in terms of lifetime for that given C10 applied load. So that's what X naught refers to. And theta and B simply change the shape of the probability distribution function. So what we do is we write the reliability function here and we choose a particular design reliability that we want, say we wanted 95%, for instance, and then what we will do is solve for this value xb. If we solve for the value xb by flipping this equation around, we get this result right here, where xb is x0, that's a Weibull parameter, plus theta minus x0, that's another Weibull parameter, times the natural log of one over our chosen design reliability, that natural log is all to the one over B power. And that then allows us to find a C10 value. So we wanna choose a higher reliability than is offered by the C10 values. And that means we are trying to move from the blue reliability curve of 90% to some higher reliability. So we are trying to move left to increase the reliability. Now we have on any, uh, the catalog ratings are all for this blue curve. And on that blue curve, we would have a C10 value that would be associated with an L10 lifetime. But we now use normalized lifetimes in these plots, and that is we're just taking whatever lifetime we have and we are dividing it by the L10 lifetime. This intercept here with the C10 value on the 90% reliability curve would be an X10 value, and that would be equal to one. Suppose we have a design that has a reliability RD, which is greater than 90%, and we have a design normalized lifetime, XD. XD would be our design lifetime divided by L10. So we need to know the L10 lifetime for the particular manufacturer we're gonna be using, and that gives us a related radial design life. So we have an FD and we have an XD, and this XD is a normalized lifetime. Now what we know is that on any given curve, we have a simple power law relationship. So if we're out here on the 90% reliability curve, we can move up and down along that curve and relate load lifetime to C10, L10 easily. When we change reliability, we have to move over to this red curve. And so now what we have to do is associate what we call XB lifetime that is associated with that C10 value on our design reliability curve, that's red curve. If we have that XB, then we know that C10 times XB to the one over A is going to be equal to our particular design radial load times our normalized design lifetime to the one over A. And that says our C10 value is simply our design value of radial load. And I take my normalized design lifetime divide it by XB to the one over A, and that allows me to pick out a C10 value from the catalog with a reliability that's now associated with the red curve. The way we manage this is we take this XB that we have up here, and we place that XB down in this power law equation, and that gives us a C10 value that is going to be equal to our design radial load times our normalized design lifetime divided by X0 plus theta minus X0 times the natural log of one one over our design reliability, that stuff to the one over B, and all of that to the one over A. That allows us to calculate a C10 value for a different reliability. We need to know the 
libel parameters in order for us to do this. Those would be provided by the manufacturer. We also have to calculate our XD value. We need to know if we're using roller or ball bearings. A is 3 for ball bearings and 10 thirds for roller. And we need to know our design radial load. Now, we are always choosing our bearings for the dynamic load C10, but we're going to end up using a static load rating C0 to help us to make corrections for the case when we have axial loads that are also applied to the bearings. We're going to have to find an equivalent radial load when we have axial loads. C0 is a static load rating. It's always less than C10, and so C0 is a bit more conservative, but we're going to be using that C0 to help us once we have axial loads applied to the bearings. Now the other thing that we need to do is we need to modify the radial static design load. We're always using statics to calculate that radial load, but we're really going to be operating in a dynamic environment. And so we want to modify that design radial load by multiplying it by what's called a load application factor, AF. Table 11.5 shows a bunch of load application factors for different applications, and you can see that they vary from one all the way up to three to take account of the dynamic loading that may occur. So we may want to modify our load to account for dynamic loading using the load application factor. Now the best way to sort through all this is to actually take a look at an example from the textbook. In this example, there's a 413 pound load with an application load factor of 1.2. The shaft spins at 300 RPM. It's to last 30,000 hours with a reliability of 0.99. So you know that we have to do a Weibull reliability shift and it's asking us to calculate a C10 value. So we just use the equation that we developed a moment ago to calculate that C10 value. The first thing that we have to do, of course, is look up all the Weibull parameters. We're gonna to need to know X naught, theta, and B. And we are also going to have to calculate our normalized lifetime. If we are operating at 300 RPM right here, we multiply that by 60 and the number of hours, which is 30,000, normalize it by 1 times 10 to the 6th in this case, because we're going to be using SKF bearings. And that gives us a normalized lifetime of 540. Our application factor is 1.2. If we use the Weibull parameters supplied by SKF, this is manufacturer 2 in this table from the book. Timken is manufacturer 1. We find that the XB value for these input values of the Weibull parameters is 0.22. Our C10 value is then our load application factor times our design radial load. We divide our normalized design lifetime, which is 540, by our XB value, which is 0.22. We're using ball bearings, and we end up with 6,689 pound force. We convert to kilonewtons. We find a C10 value of 30 kilonewtons. Easy to do. Uh, table 11.4 shows a bunch of bearing life recommendations in kilo hours for different applications. You and your particular design firm will decide what lifetime you want from your bearings. That's all we're going to do for reliability shifting. Next time, we're going to talk about combined radial and axial loads. Obviously, in all of these cases, we're going to be using Excel spreadsheets to do the calculations. That will give us a target C10. There is some value in talking briefly about the Weibull distribution. It's very different from a normal distribution. This lower graph shows the probability density function for a Weibull distribution using the Weibull parameters for the SKF bearings. The important thing about these Weibull parameters is X0 is a normalized lifetime below which you will have 100% reliability. Theta is called the scale parameter and B is called the shape parameter which simply changes the shape and scale of the probability density function. You integrate this probability density function to get the reliability, and you find that the reliability as a function of normalized lifetime, of course, goes down. At 0.02 value of normalized lifetime, the reliability is 100%, a probability of 1, that it will last that many cycles. As you increase the number of cycles, the probability of survival goes down. Now, if we change this shape parameter, if we had a different distribution, let's say it's two, you can see that the probability density function and the Weibull reli reliability function also change. The scale parameter would change that as well. 
You can see the effect that these things have. And so this is a three parameter fit to a data set that is collected for the lifetimes of bearings.